I think we're all ready. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I'm about ready to uh, just begin the uh, town council meeting for Tuesday, January 21st. Will the former deputy mayor, Mike Hurley, lead us in Pledge of Allegiance, please? Dolores, uh, attendance, Council, please. Councilor Moore and Bellow. Here. Councilor Flanagan. Here. Councilor Forrest. Here. Councilor Hill is unable to attend tonight. Councilor Parker. Here. Councilor Pelletier. Here. Councilor Penelo is going to be late in five minutes. Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. Here. And Mayor Michael Rell. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Dolores. Uh, tonight we have. Um, a, a special uh, dedication for one of our own who uh, I'm proud to have uh, served next to for six years. He's the other Mike that was on the council, um, my, uh, my right hand guy uh, for those years. Um, I just wanted to um, you know, take the liberty just to, to say uh, a few remarks uh, and then I'll open it up to the floor for those. I know um, Councilwoman Bellow served with uh, uh, with uh, Mike as well as well as some friends uh, and colleagues up here as uh, um, when you know m more than likely want to say a few words uh, but on behalf of the uh, the town council uh, I do want to recognize Mike Curley for his uh, years of dedication to the town not only uh, through the town council but uh, before town council you were involved uh, I see some of your kids around um, you were involved with the uh, little league as well as soccer of course uh, I think that's kind of what got Mike involved in uh, in running for town politics, uh, um, trying to make a difference here in town. And uh, I can say that the uh, the six years that I served and the four years that he served before me, uh, Mike definitely did make a difference. Um, I made mention that he was kind of my right hand man when I first started, but prior to that, Mike was a uh, instrumental asset to uh, this council with his ability to work numbers. And he's the only CPA that I think uh, served uh, on the council for the last 10 years. Uh, he did a great job. Uh, nobody better to dissect the, the town budget than Mike. Uh, when we had questions, he, all, he knew the answers uh, immediately. Um, he actually knew the questions before we could even a uh, ask him. Um, and for that, we were always grateful to have him uh, on the council. Um, I do have a, a, a plaque for him, and uh, if, if Mike can come on up, uh, I'd love to be able to present it to him and his one and only <laughs> deputy mayor plaque. Oh, I got a deputy mayor plaque. So <laughs> you got <this>. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. We can do this. You can really get your photo taken like that. <laughs> you can come over here too. Okay. He was my deputy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got Santa off it though. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike, uh, Mike, this uh, plaque is presented to you in appreciation for your dedicated service to the town of Weathersfield, awarded this sixth day of January. We tried it last, uh, at the last meeting. Uh, we couldn't get uh, you around. But this is for your town council memberships from 2009 to 2019, 10 full years, and your deputy mayor from 2019 to 2020. On behalf of not only the town council, but myself, Thank you for all your service. Thank you. Okay, I do thank everybody for getting up and clapping. That's not really that necessary. But yeah, on the 6th, I wasn't feeling that great because that was my first day back to actually work. So I decided to come in the, the next council meeting, which was today. And I think there's, I kind of left the council a little bit because there's Matt, Amy, and Mike are the three on the council that have been on the council before, but every, everybody else looks good. Especially Mary, the, my fill-in, which is very nice. 
but I really don't have that much to say. I like my 10 years. I like doing a lot of the stuff that I did. I didn't like everything you do because you have to do it to get things in place. But, you know, I liked it. And I hope you guys do a great job. Okay? Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. If I might. Please, go right ahead. Hey, Mike, before you leave, <laughs> I can't argue with you anymore and fight on the other side of the aisle anymore, so I want to give you two minutes. But um, I, ha I have enjoyed working with you the last four years on council, knowing you for years as a neighbor and a friend, and I wish you all the best. Um, and I am glad that you won't be proposing a $3 million Board of Ed cut this year. So. <laughs> Wishing you all the best, Mike. Yeah, I, I didn't serve as, with you as long as Amy did. Obviously, it was the last two years, but of course, always uh, Mike always came with some thoughts, his ideas, and he was always very cordial and civil. And although no one on this dais agrees with everybody else on this dais about everything, and that's part of the reason we have a society of different people, um, I always respected the fact that it was a good civil conversation and that doesn't happen with everybody But it definitely happens with Mike. So Mike, I enjoyed serving with you and I wish you the best Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> I actually met Mike's cardboard cutout <laughs> before I met Mike <laughs> at The Irish American <coughs> Club maybe three years ago. It was being paraded all around while I was there to see an Irish band so I'm, I'm glad we got to meet briefly, Mike, while we were running in the beginning, and wish you the best, and hopefully you'll be back here someday soon. Definitely. Great. Well, thank you for coming, Mike. Thank you for bringing your family, and thanks for all the supporters for coming and showing Mike uh, a final goodbye. It's really not a, a final goodbye. I'm sure we're going to be calling on you in the... I might be calling on you. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Blackbirds need to get paved right now. <laughs> I'm happy to work on that for you. We can do it. Thank you. Thanks for your dedication to the town. Appreciate it. I don't see any um, public hearings, so we'll go right into public comment. If there's anyone willing to speak or wishing to speak, Yes, please. Mm. Yeah. Good evening, Rita Ann Owen, 42 Wells Farm yeah. Drive. Yeah. I was here last time to speak to you um, in, in support of the blight ordinance. So since tonight you're going to be voting, I'm just back to ask you to um, please to vote for that. I think we really need to update the blight ordinance. Um, I should tell you that, I think I'm supposed to tell you that <laughs> I am an alternate member of the Zoning Board of Appeals, but I am speaking only for myself. And since I had to come tonight, I had one other thing that I'd like to um, ask you, and that is to look into how agendas are posted. Um, the Town Council is really good. Your agenda is always available, but um, I know that legally probably it's okay just to put it on the board out by the, uh, the office here on the first floor, but I think it would really help the townspeople if they could find agendas in a consistent place. For instance, tomorrow night there's a planning and zoning um, commission meeting, and the only place you can find that agenda if you don't want to come down here to town hall to look is um, on Mr. Evans' manager's report. Um, it's, you know, an attachment there, but it's not a link to where the meeting is posted, and it's not on the uh, underneath the agendas and um, minutes tabs. So I would just like maybe that s staff could look into doing something like that on a regular basis so that we could see what's going to be on the agendas. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Owen. Anybody else? Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, over the last number of meetings, I've come to you and uh, spoke to you about ways of saving money. And I hope you will 
look at some of those ideas that I brought. But, you know, we, we spend money foolishly in this town. And there was an article that was in the Hartford Current this Sunday that caught my eye about how money in the state of Connecticut, <coughs> and including this, the town of Weathersfield, how badly and poorly it's spent. There's no wiseness to it whatsoever. There was an article, and it was entitled, Political Deal in Orange Goes Sour. This is about Orange, Connecticut. And I, I, I mentioned this piece of property back some few months ago. And uh, while I was talking about other properties that were selling for a lot cheaper in our area, yet we spent so much to buy the Keisha farm, $75,000 an acre. And that included five or six acres of wetlands. We paid a tremendous price. But this article, and I'm just going to read a couple paragraphs. It says, the Malloy administration agreed in 2018 to pay $5.5 million for a Democrat political donor, donor's eight-acre land parcel in Orange, a deal that collapsed under a wave of public scrutiny and criticism following the current story that raised questions about the land's value and the seller's donations of $20,000 to the state Democratic Party. Now, with state funds out of the picture, land records show the property was sold last month on a private market, on the private market for $1.7 million less than one-third of what state taxpayers were almost on the hook for. $1.7 million the property sold for. And originally, a deal was being put together with our governor and his staff for $5.5 million. Why did the deal fall apart? The article goes on and talks about that the, t the state of Connecticut has a group called the State Properties Review Board, which nixed the deal. They looked at it and nixed it. And I said to myself, doesn't Weathersfield have a, a town property review board? Because the way this deal in Weathersfield was put together, it was all secret. Nobody knew anything. The, the administration, the town, the interim town manager, the attorneys, everybody kept quiet until the deal was done. And then they still haven't <coughs> talked about it. And the real kincher that caught my eye even more on this is that the article talks about, I got to turn the page that in order to do this crooked deal and screw in, and screwed around the property review commission, it was suggested that the, the seller use a state, state, what do you call them, uh, a vendor that is qualified by the state to do an appraisal and maybe they could slip it through. And they did, or they tried. And the thing is, there was a company called Karen and Fazio, LLC of Fairfield, Connecticut, that came out with a value on this property of $5.47 million. In the meantime, the state of Connecticut's DOT said, they did an appraisal and said it was worth $566,000. And then to make the matter worse, the town of Weathersfield hired 
an appraiser called Karen Fazio from Fairfield County or Fairfield, Connecticut, to do the appraisal on the Keisha farm. Mr. Young, yes, your sir. five minutes are up, but if you want to wrap that up or continue on at the end. Oh, I'm going we'll to come happy. back and continue. I'll probably come back and talk for the next six meetings, okay? Because I really think this okay. is important information. It definitely is. We have the state of Connecticut that is as crooked as a corkscrew, and the town of Wethersfield is very close to that as well. I'll be back. Great. We appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else want Mr. Colantonio, please? This guy sounds too tall. <coughs> Tom, Tom, you know what I mean, right? <coughs> Good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Uh, I watch a lot of Fox News lately, you know. And, uh, well, I know that only a few people watch it, but anyway. The state of Connecticut is one of the worst states that you can live on for taxes. We have uh, property taxes, which are very high. We have an income tax, which is also high. Uh, and we have a sales tax. Every time you turn around, there is a tax. Where are we going? When is it gonna stop? Well, I guess nobody knows. If someday there is a revolution, I'll be the first one to join, but anyway. Uh, in the winter months, uh, I, I was waiting for uh, the Wethersfield adult education. You know, even though I'm 73 years old, I'm an older man, not old, older man, and uh, I like to get educated no matter what. It's never really too late to learn something new. So I was looking at uh, what they offer. Very interesting, you know? Replacement Windows Workshop, one workshop, course fee $20, $20, I mean, you know, nowadays $20, you go out to lunch, you spend more than that. There's another one too right here, you know. You really need to have an estate plan. Again, there is a seminar, an hour and a half, one of it, $14, wow. Why am I bringing this up? Obviously, every time you take a course, there are expenses and whatnot. But who's watching over us? Who's watching for what we spend or where the money goes? Again, 73, I would like to take a course, and I'm not going to take a course because it costs money. I'm a penny pincher, I guess. But last year, basically, I attended three seminars regarding uh, trust and wills and everything else three different weeks, one week after the other. And every time my wife and I went, we got treated with, uh, with a dinner. It was nice. And every once in a while, you know, a few weeks after that, I got, a, I got another offer from uh, Anderson Windows in Glastonbury. I go there, I went there, I asked a friend of mine to join me because my wife was not interested in, in, uh, in Windows replacement, you know? <laughs> We got there, we, we learned a little bit here and there, and we got a free dinner again. Now, the question that I have for the time, again, these are older generation, I mean, you know, I'm old. Where does that 14 or $20 bill goes? Does it go toward the, the school, I guess, I mean, you know, the heating system, the lights and everything else? My youngest one is 30 years old, but yet, I've been paying taxes that goes toward the Board of Education for very long. Now I would like to take a course, and you guys are charging me. And the only fee, I guess, you know, this is, if you want to reduce the fee, we give you a break. If you're 62 years older or old, we give you a break of $2. Now, if I were living in, West, uh, in Rocky Hill or Newington, I could come right here, and, and the only break that I would not get is that $2 but I would have to pay $14 for the, I don't think it makes too much sense. Where are we going? You know, I would not be surprised that in a few years down the road, they're gonna put a tax on, on uh, you know, the air we breathe. 
I mean, that's, that's going the wrong way, guys. <coughs> we cannot keep on going and spend and spend and spend forever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Anybody else want to speak? No? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of Council, uh, Doug Shipman, 381 Hartford Avenue, and I'm really here uh, not to ask for anything or, or even to complain about anything, just to provide a little bit of information about the Veterans Commission and its wisdom last year, or excuse me, uh, two years ago, the Council established uh, the town's first Veterans Commission. Uh, it consists of currently six members. I am co-chair along with Ryan Biggs uh, and serve with Dan Camilleri, Rick Newell, who is here today as well. Uh, and uh, Helen Nye and Frank Senna. Uh, I want to compliment the council on having the wisdom to establish the commission and also uh, to thank former liaison um, Ken Lesser, uh, who's no longer with the council, but helped to uh, select some of the members and, and welcome Brooks as our, uh, our new liaison who attended his first meeting just the other day. Uh, since uh, we started doing our work as the commission representing the town and, and uh, fulfilling our obligation to assist and advise the town and its residents on veterans' issues, uh, which is what we are charged to do. We started a, a needs assessment through a variety of means, uh, establishing some coffees and, and reaching out to veterans to try to find out what some of their issues and concerns were, any of the gaps that might exist in service to veterans. Uh, and we initiated a survey beginning on election day. Uh, just wanted to inform the council and any of viewers that may happen to be seeing this on, on closed circuit television that uh, until the end of January, you may still participate in the veterans survey. There are three ways to participate. Uh, you can come to the Weathersfield uh, Public Library. Uh, we've had excellent support from the library staff as well as the Parks and Rec staff and a lot of the town staff in implementing the survey. You can go to the town website uh, to the Veterans Commission uh, landing page and uh, access it online there. Uh, and you can also um, uh, call if you're unable to use the computer or unable to get to the library. You can use the telephone and, and call Christine Taylor at 721 Seven seven, and she will actually take the survey for you over the telephone. So I just want to say thank you to you all for establishing the commission. Thanks to the town staff for the fantastic support we get every time we, we do these things. The veterans are being well served by, by the town staff, and we look forward to reporting back to you once we have the results of the survey and have a little bit more information to make some recommendations to the council on ways we can better serve the veterans. So thank you very much. Thank you, Doug, and thank you for your service as well, not only to the town, but to, uh, to our country. Uh, anybody else want to uh, speak on the first public hearing con comment? Okay, well, thank you. Uh, we'll go right into council reports. Anybody have any council reports? I attended the Veterans Commission meeting, and I don't need to say anything more. <laughs> I basically just said everything I was going to say. Um, but the survey is open through the end of the month, and they did provide me with some preliminary statistics, and they had about 13% um, response rate as of January 5th, so they're doing a very good job with no budget to get some of this information, and it's a good group of people, and they do have some vacancies. Um, I also attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting on the 9th, uh, Chamber of Commerce is moving right along. They hosted the State of the Town breakfast, which some of us attended. Uh, that was well attended and very well done. Um, the town's moving in the right direction. Uh, the committee's focus right now is about just membership uh, recruitment and retainment, and they are gonna have a uh, little mini retreat at a point in the near future just to s discuss some of the ways what the chamber provides to its members, how to retain members, that type of thing. So it's, it's a very good group. I enjoy getting to know them. Great. Thank you. Anybody else? Councilwoman Bella. Thank you, Mayor. I attended the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. Um, one of our conversations was on the three existing vacancies. So we will work. I, I did um, reach out to Rich Roberts and to Paul Montaneri, and we will try to get some people on that commission. Um, 
advisory committee. It was difficult to meet when there was no quorum, um, but they did discuss with Peter Gillespie barrier transition plan and evaluation. So the town is in the process of kind of a 10 year plan to identify issues throughout the community that um, impact people with disabilities. So uh, Peter was there to present it and ask for some feedback. So the committee will work on some feedback. Um, also, there's a small grant that the advisory committee um, has the authority to authorize. Um, and it is to help people that have some disabilities and need um, you know, a small amount of money maybe to help them do something in their home to make it more livable or for some kind of services. So if you're somebody who may have an interest in that, you can reach out to our town social services. Um, there are many Special Olympics events beginning in January. Uh, and then the last discussion was on how we reach out to people in the community and how ta the town knows who those people are. So um, there was some conversation on that as well. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, no more council reports. Okay, council comments. <coughs> Deputy Mayor. Uh, you have in front of you a packet from uh, Colonel John Chester, Fife and Drum Corps. Uh, Art Hutchinson, who uh, has led the Corps for most of his life, uh, was here in October and presenting the information to uh, the previous council. He wanted to get this packet out uh, seeing that we have some new members on council. Uh, they're planning a 80th anniversary uh, muster, July 10th and 11th. And uh, this is a very large event, uh, serves children age seven to 18. And um, they're also hosting the 2020 national muster here in Wethersfield. So the packet gives a bunch of information on the core, what they're all about and what the, what the uh, two day event is consisting of. Um, they're looking at receiving uh, groups from as far away as Switzerland for this event. Uh, we're hoping to see a large number of participants and families and <coughs> bring a big crowd to Weathersfield and we're hoping that we can uh, do what we can as a council to support this effort. It is a volunteer group. They're looking for some assistance in regards to police uh, and maintenance and things of that nature. So uh, being that we're entering the budget season, maybe we can keep that in the back of our mind for setting a little aside for these guys. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Bella. Yeah, I just have a couple quick things. Um, one, I would like to um, send my condolences to Mr. Nick's family. He was a beloved English, English teacher at Wethersfield High School that passed away this weekend, and um, one of my daughters was lucky to have him last year. He really engaged with students and went beyond just teaching in the classroom, and um, he'll definitely be missed at the high school. Um, also, I'd like to thank the Chamber of Commerce and the Historical Society and town staff for the state of the town um, breakfast that we several of us attended last week. And finally, I'd like to thank the mayor for letting me know that, the, that Wethersfield will have events to honor the 100th anniversary for the women's right to vote. And I hope Mary and I are able to um, play a part in some of those events and activities. Definitely. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, so not to uh, uh, over step anything with the uh, the Chambers of Commerce uh, State of the Town event, but uh, I was there as well. Thank you for those who, who were in attendance, and it is really good news uh, on how the, um, the town is going. Uh, we're moving in a, a pretty good direction, and uh, I think the, the previous councils have always been, you know, been uh, active and set a good foundation, so I'm hopeful that uh, this year we can continue that effort. Uh, there were some conversations last council meeting about the community conversations that have been hosted by, uh, by this town. Uh, it is our plan and I, I've talked with our town manager to, to continue hosting those uh, community conversations. Uh, a number of them are in the works right now. We're just working out a couple of the details. 
um, but we should be able to get that out to the public um, fairly shortly. Um, along the, the same lines as uh, the community conversations, uh, there will be a coffee hour. Um, you know, I, I think this started a, a couple years ago under um, Mayor Montaneri. I know Mayor Bello had, uh, had hosted a number of them herself, and uh, I'm looking forward to hosting a couple of my own. Um, the first one is coming up. Uh, it's actually going to be with uh, Chuck Carey, the um, uh, Board of Ed uh, President, uh, our chairman, um, January 25th, 9 to 10.30 at Panera Bread. Uh, there's going to be a couple others, uh, kind of taking my hat off from when I you know, did these as a, a staff person. Uh, I do plan on hosting a number of these uh, to make it as easy and as convenient for people as possible either some in the morning or some in the evening. Um, they're just going to be conversations, frank conversations, open conversations for people to have about what's going on in town, issues, and hopefully some solutions on some, uh, some problems that uh, we're faced with. Um, and finally, uh, I did, did want to mention, without Tony Martino up here uh, on the council, uh, I don't know, maybe Council and Mazzarello can fill in, but uh, Unico is hosting a comedy night <laughs> on, um, and I say that because you're a comedian. Uh, <laughs> uh, Unico is hosting a uh, comedy night this Friday at the community center. I believe it's 7 o'clock. Uh, the cost is $25. There's some uh, tickets that are still available, not many, um, but it is a good way to support uh, an organization that does so much for our town. So if uh, you find yourselves wanting to go out on a, on a Friday night and uh, help a community uh, you know, organization, please do. Uh, it's again seven o'clock Friday night at the community center. Thank you. Oh yeah, now I guess go into town uh, town manager's report. Sorry. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I, I need the official referral. Um, so at, and I'll ha harp on the same conversation about the state of the town. I thought it was uh, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for hosting. I thought it was a, a, a wonderfully attended event and, and very well organized. Um, I will comment about a number of things that were mentioned there that I thought were of interest and would be of interest to the town as a whole. The first is the, um, that some of the highlights were uh, building permits as a whole were up 21% at this time over last year. The values of commercial properties have more than doubled from, again, at this time last year. A lot of that having to do with uh, some of the growth uh, that we're seeing uh, within the town and interest that's happening within the town for development uh, with the the board end 275 Ridge Road uh, now 130 Ridge Road um, so there's a number of large developments that are taking place we're going to use those opportunities to um, uh, become catalysts for further development and uh, as a group and as we announce we're, we're going to chase the development for as long as we can um, the importance of that value is that it brings revenue into the town, it brings interest in the town, it brings people from outside the area looking to come here to support the local economy, and that's what we need to drive development. Um, I also had mentioned during the presentation that crime rate as a whole has dropped 17% over last year. Um, Weathersfield, excuse me, remains one of the lowest crime rates for all of the Hartford Ring towns, so... Uh, where our officers are out there on a daily basis doing what they can, um, and I think they're doing a great job. A couple other things to note that Peter Gillespie spoke about. We hit uh, four large magazine or four large commercial publications in the last year, essentially American Magazine, which produced um, a display about Weathersfield, things that are happening in the Northeast. They break it down into... Uh, quadrants. Connecticut Economic Digest, Weathersfield was one of the two fastest growing economies over the past year among the towns or cities with populations between 25,000 and 100,000. Uh, Wallet Hub, as, as I mentioned during the October council meeting, we were ranked number three as one of the best small cities in Connecticut. It was The ranking was for best small cities in America. We were number three in Connecticut. Um, and then last but not least, Yankee Magazine. If you go to newengland.com for the January 2020 addition, we were ranked one of the 15 prettiest winter villages in New England. We also announced that staff is working on updating the existing strategic economic development plan across the multiple commissions within the town. We're doing this to take those plans and now establish the implementation <coughs> proposal 
and the funding proposals going forward so that we can take some of those strategies and actually put them into play to, again, chase the economic development opportunities. Um, I think it's important to note that we're not looking to reinvent the wheel. I think there were a lot of um, uh, engaged, talented individuals and volunteers over the last several years that have helped to create these plans. Um, at this point, we need to update them, make sure they're relevant, make sure the concepts are still um, available to you, to us and that funding is still available and then march forward with getting them um, moving. Uh, just two quick things uh, to mention. Last Wednesday, we started the Capital Improvement Advisory Committee process or the process of reviewing capital improvement plans for the upcoming budget cycle. That group will meet the following uh, four Wednesdays, beginning last week is the first Wednesday. Um, at 5 p.m. in the town manager's conference room, we invite residents to come and listen in um, to hear what's going on. We have almost just shy of $3 million worth of requests, and traditionally we've seen about $900,000 um, available in the budget to cover those $3 million worth of requests. And lastly, just as a point of information for the council, so you're aware, uh, I have a meeting with the state tomorrow regarding their desire to um, potentially purchase. It's technically a condemnation, but that has a negative connotation, um, but it's the legal process is called a, a condemnation. A little sliver of property so that they can install traffic, upgrade and install traffic lighting at the corner of Spring Street and Route 3. Um, and I will update the council once that's finalized to see what the next steps may be. They have offered us a certain dollar amount. We're determining whether or not that value is fair and reasonable. It's a very small sliver. Um, the reality is I don't think the town would notice if it was missing. Um, but until I hear back from the state and have confirmed, um, I won't have much to report on it. And that concludes my report. Great. Thank you. Well, if we get a budget cut from the state, maybe we can increase the dollar amount on that property. Works hold it me. in. <laughs> hold it over their head. Um, Dolores, uh, <coughs> town clerk, any <coughs> communications? Well, I have all the town committee slates uh, have already presented to me on the 15th, and you have a, a few days until July, uh, January 28th to um, sign, try to sign in if you'd like to uh, petition to get onto the slate. And then the 28th of January is the last day to change from party to party to vote in the primary. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving on, council action. I believe we have a couple resignations and uh, a couple more appointments. Uh, I'll start off with resignations. Uh, Deputy Mayor. I make a motion to accept the resignation of Mary Pelletier from the following three boards and commissions. From the Housing Authority, uh, term 8 15, 16 to 7 31 21. From the Library Board, for the term 7 1 17 to 6 30 20. And from Zoning Board of Appeals, a term of 7 1 17 to 6 30 22. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. I don't know how Mary had time to do anything else. There's three of them. <laughs> so, we, well, we sorry to see you leave those, but we're happy to have you here. Thanks. And then I, I believe we have uh, a couple of appointments. I'll start off with um, Councilwoman Bellow. Sure, um, on the Human Rights and Relations Commission, we have an alternate to a full member, Mark S. Townsend at 38 McMullen Avenue for a term 12120 to 63023. And as an alternate to fill this vacancy, Sarah Truex of 52 Sharon Lane for a term 12120 to 63020. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. The motion's adopted. Thank you. And then finally, we've got uh, two appointments. Uh, again, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella. Make a motion to appoint Lori Rona to the Library Board 
on 16 Fairmont Street for the term of 12120 to 63020. And they can do them together, right? Correct. And also uh, to the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, Danielle uh, Belowick, 96 Orchard Hill Drive, the term of 12120 to 63022. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Motion's adopted. Thank you all. <coughs> Moving forward, uh, we have now uh, an approval of the or discussion on the uh, ordinance uh, to amend chapter 122 on blighted premises. Uh, this is something that the previous council had worked on in the past. I know Councilman Forrest has been involved uh, in this. Uh, I'll first you know, open it up to the town manager for some comments on it, and then I'll open it up for discussion. Thank you, Mayor, and to the council. Um, this is an initiative that, from my opinion, uh, is very important to property maintenance as the condition of properties directly impacts the quality of life for residents. It um, helps stabilize the tax rate um, it ensures that people feel comfortable, safe, um, and that their property values remain consistent. Um, and I don't see it as a means to be negative for the community. I see it as an opportunity. Um, you know, I have this conversation a lot, the idea of progressive discipline or the idea of zoning or the idea of blight enforcement is really about, um, it's not about penalizing individuals. It's it's about moving things in a certain direction and making sure that everyone understands the rules. So the reality is that this is a very important, um, these changes are, are necessary and important because it creates a clear enforcement process. It helps residents and business owners understand um, what the regulations require. It allows us to have a shorter response time when things might be out of step with what community standards are. Um, and it allows us as a whole to have some teeth uh, and take the state legislation and create some teeth within our own community. So um, I appreciate your consideration and support. Great, thank you. Uh, any comment from council? Dep oh. Mayor. Go ahead. Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> yeah, um, I support the uh, revision to the, to the ordinance, but I did wanna make a few comments. Um, I want the, I want it to be assured that the changes to the blight ordinance are not an intent to, I don't wanna say harass, but dwell on uh, property owners, residents that may have something, something going on in their lives. Uh, maybe it's a, a health issue or uh, an elderly person living by themselves or uh, uh, financial difficulties and, I've been assured from the discussions with the town manager that that's not the case and we're not out looking to take people's property away uh, through a foreclosure action or anything of that nature and that uh, the first step that the town would take if, if an incident does uh, surface is that we would, uh, we would investigate what's, what's some of the background behind this. Is, is there something going on in the, in the residence that we need to know about and uh, that could be taken care of or uh, mediated through social services. And uh, any kind of uh, liens or uh, fines or liens or anything of that nature would be a, an absolute last resort. Uh, I think the, the intent of this is really to focus on some of the commercial properties or some of the properties that are uh, vacant and owned by uh, absentee uh, land lo land uh, owners, if you will, and uh, I don't see any problem in, in going after these these situations. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of uh, you have to have that uh, threat, if you will, of uh, some serious fines to motivate some people in the right direction. So I think that that that'll be a good thing for the town. That's it. Great. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak on this? Councilman Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. And uh, Deputy, I, I think you're exactly right in the, in the intent and the, your, your thoughts on the safeguards in the situations that you described, I think are very thoughtful. 
Um, the certainly the intent as it came out of the commit, uh, you know, the the committee or the really the redevelopment agency um, was was really twofold. First of all, it really was a look at the commercial properties we've got, whether it's out of uh, landlords that are not present, but also the real issue. Uh, can be and has been in many places is when you have vacant commercial properties, you get a lot of squatters, uh, which is a is a pretty can be a pretty big issue of burning buildings and and collapsing buildings. And we do have buildings that are on the verge, if not have already collapsed. So there is a real sort of health and safety issue to some to some of the issues here, as we get to the, the dilapidated commercial properties, including bug infestations and things like that that can spread. Um, and then when it comes to sort of the more residential properties, we're looking at bank, not we're looking at, but like bank owned, already bank owned properties with our absentee landlords, out of state owners who may be renting, but now don't care about the town. They're non-president vacant buildings. So I think you're quite right about where that sort of priority list is and, and the concerns about um, Weathersfield residents that are living in their homes, but you know ha may have certain situations in their life where uh, they can't keep up the property, but but you, you aptly said that, and I, I think that's the concern when drafting this particular property maintenance bill <laughs> ordinance, however you want to define it, right? Um, and I think the safeguard and the safeguards are, well, there are many safeguards, including right to hearing and, and the income, and the hearing officer has the ability to uh, take all of those, um, what do they call them? Hardships into consideration, uh, <coughs> certainly when and if to levy any type of a fine on top of the fact that the town has its discretion about whether or not to issue a ticket so there's two there's not only is there discretion on the town then there's third party discretion protection for any of the landowners so um so it i i think you're quite right in your comments and i think that's uh it's a good piece to hopefully move forward in order to maybe help turn around some of the properties in town and um if there are some eyesores with absentee landlords to help fix them up too Great. Yes, Deputy Mayor. I kind of didn't finish the bottom of my notes here, but I just wanted to end end this by saying that you know it's great to have a uh, a revised uh, policy with um, some more teeth, as you put it. Uh, but it really comes down to enforcement. So we, I think we need to step up our enforcement and uh, be more proactive in that. The the way the code's written now, it talks about neighbors filing complaints, and I, I don't think we should let properties get to the point where uh, a neighbor has to get irritated enough with the situation to, to call the town or to file a complaint. And I think, you know, our own staff ought, who's out on the road during a normal course of business ought to be able to, uh, you know, uh, set this enforcement into, into at least notifying the party and get the ball rolling that way rather than waiting for uh, uh, neighbor complaints. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other comments at all? Um, just, uh, uh, just a couple of remarks on this, uh, and I have to agree with uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella and Councilman Forrest on this. Uh, but just going back to where this originated, and uh, I believe Councilman Forrest had mentioned this was an RDA uh, proposal, if I'm not mistaken, from, from last year. And uh, I think going forward with this uh, increased uh, awareness on blight and uh, possibly abandoned property and, and, and property that needs to be you know, cared for by the landowner or the property owner uh, better, that it is uh, the focus is on commercial, and that's you know kind of how RDA uh, was involved in this. So going forward, looking at what properties can be taken care of, uh, so that we can get uh, the possibility of development into uh, into some of these vacant buildings, this may be a, a first step in in getting um, property owners to adhere to some of the rules and regulations that are already in place, and and provide a little bit more teeth uh, to get them to uh, abide by some of them. Uh, but I also have to agree with the final comments that Mr. Mazzarella had made with regard to the um, zoning enforcement officer. Uh, that is somebody who should be out on the road more. Uh, um, unfortunately, with uh, some of the constraints uh, on timing, that uh, we need to have you know boots on the ground to be able to look at some of these properties 
uh, take some of the concerns into to, uh, heart and you know work with the homeowners on, on some that uh, uh, are the hardship ones. But when there aren't, um, I think we should be able to um, involve that uh, zoning enforcement officer a little bit more so that uh, he can use his tools properly to be able to get these folks to move ahead and, uh, and possibly you know, make their properties better, and uh, and by doing so, you make Weathersfield a little bit more attractive. Um, so I think this is a good ordinance. I know it's been worked on for the last couple months. Hopefully, we've got final resolution on it, and we could support it tonight. Any other comments at all? Nope. Okay. Uh, motion is before us. Um, I think we need to make a motion. Yeah, actually, no. I think we need to make a motion to. Oh. Now uh, you want to do it? Sure. Thanks. Uh, I move to make uh, I, m I move to amend Chapter 122 of the Town of Weathersfield Code of Ordinances, blighted properties, as submitted by the town manager. Motion's been made. Second. And a second. Um, okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Any abstentions on this one? Nope. Okay. Motion's adopted. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't believe we have any unfinished. Uh, minutes are before us. I'll give you guys a couple minutes to take a look if you haven't looked so uh, looked at them already. And make a motion to approve the minutes as submitted. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Or any discussion on the minutes? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Eyes have it. Minutes have been adopted. Okay, now we'll go back to the second round of uh, public comment. Anybody wishing to speak? Mr. Colantonio. Good evening again. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Last year, sometimes uh, my wife and I met with the town manager and the town engineer regarding what? Morrison Avenue. It's been a lot, many years. Walking out of that meeting, we, we felt pretty good. Says, you know, at least uh, the town engineer suggested, uh, you know, make some suggestion to make a portion of Morrison Avenue from 24 to 22 feet. Just the fact that he wanted to, you know, he suggested something, to, you know, to do it on the, on the section of uh, Morrison Avenue that I'm concerned shows that he also had concerns, otherwise he would have said, forget it, the way it is, it's okay. But it's been a few months now, that was last year. I know he's, he's out of the office now or whatever, but how long is it gonna take? How long is it gonna take, really? I mean, you know, again, I am a day younger than tomorrow, but you know, <laughs> but I'm getting older, you know, and I, and I would like to see something happen, and if, uh, if he needs some help, or he can ask probably a town engineer next door to uh, Arthur or, or Newington or Rocky Hill to see a quick and, and, and easy solution that it's not really too expensive. I mean, you know, I always seen a stop sign, but you know, people see it differently. Uh, and when it's all said and done, I mean, you know, uh, I go by Morrison Evan every day. And now right across from Tifton, there is probably 10, 15 feet of uh, curbing that it was just lift up because of the snow. Do you people ever ask why? Since, since the new sidewalks and the road have been done there on Morrison Avenue, every year they have to do the curbing, some of the curbing. <laughs> Don't you ever ask yourself why? You know, not street from uh, Ridge Road to the, the Berlin Turnpike been done for probably 30 years already with bituminous curbing and I don't think over the, the past 30 years the curb had never been replaced was designed correctly not not, not this one right here you know and, and it's sad but anyway uh, I'm waiting for a response time manager eventually you know where is it going you know the road you know, you guys suggested to make the road a little bit narrower than what it is now. I, uh, you know, I did not really agree, but at least something needs to be done. 
location of, you know, a stop sign, I think it's the easiest way out. But you guys, every time I suggest something, says, no, you do the opposite. And thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Mr. Young. Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Uh, a few minutes ago, the manager had spoke about a number of uh, publications out there praising the town of Weathersfield. My taxes went up $590. That was 7%. 7%. My taxes went up. Did any of those articles talk about taxes? Or were they the nicey things? 7% increase this year. Mr. Forrest made a comment during the, the deliberations that the average tax was going to go up $7. But mine went up 7%. 590 bucks. I think that budget was just as crooked as the state of Connecticut. Also, I just paid my MDC water bill, and I have a lot to thank our town council who threw us under the bus. My, my water bill went up 11 bucks. Now it's close to $70 for two people every month. I think that's a horrendous amount of money to pay for water, and it's too bad the MDC didn't have competition. I know, you can buy a bottle of water. That's not competition. What they did was they really hammered the citizens. And along the way, the, t the town councils went along with them. I know you, you put up a little smoke screen once in a while, but it didn't work. Uh, you gotta do something with those folks you have sitting up there representing us. They're not representing us. They're representing somebody else. And, you know, we don't really have an honorable person running the MDC <coughs> as far as the chairman is concerned. <coughs> so maybe that explains some issues too. Anyway, I'm going to um, get back to some of this discussion on the Keisha farm and this article. Uh, this article that I was talking about, again, uh, just a quick snapshot. They used the same appraiser we used for the Keisha farm. That appraiser came in at $5.5 million when the DOT's appraiser came in at $566,000. And I've been kicking about why our appraisal, why our price of the Keisha farm was so high, $2.4 million for some measly 32 acres of land. You know, just recently there was a, in Manchester, which is a neighboring town, they had 30 acres that sold for $549,000. That's $15,000 an acre, and it's gonna be a 44, subdiv 44 lot subdivision. There was a piece of property on New Britain Avenue in Rocky Hill that sold, there was 27 acres, 27 and a half acres with a very nice home on it. It sold for $820,000. That was $29,000 an acre. Three miles away was the Keisha farm and we paid $75,000 for that. Now we talk about trying ways of saving money that prior administration we had up here was the most disgusting administration we've had in years. And they didn't care at all about the citizens. Go back and read. Go back and read, folks. This article is in the Hartford Current by John Lender. And you're gonna see some parallels. And maybe you will see some real parallels that I, that I missed between the state of Connecticut, how they buy, and property and how Weathersfield did the same. 
and we got hammered, and we're going to pay for the next X amount of years. Not only X amount of years on the mortgage that we're going to be paying on, it's what's going to go on there. What's going to go on there? Is it going to be something that's going to be costing us every year? Is it going to be something that won't cost us anything at all? What? We have some serious problems here. And then let me go a little further, as I was just talking about some properties. In this appraisal, they quote, or they, they call it a subject, Back Lane. We all know where Back Lane is, right, in Weathersfield? In Back Lane, there was 15.8 acres that sold for $640,000. And the date here is, is April of 2016. Pretty close, a couple of years away from the Keisha Farm purchase. Mr. Young. And, and if you double you that 15 acres, you us. would have been up to 1.2. But we paid 2.4. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll, I'm sure I'll be back. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else want to speak? Mr. Newell. Yeah, my name's Rick Noel. I live at 308 Knott Street. I'm also a commissioner on the Veterans Commission. Several months ago, I complained about a flag on the corner of uh, Knott and Walcott Hill, which had been up there for many years. It was not loom. Protocol says if you're going to fly a flag 24-7, it needs to be loomed. Uh, several days later, after my complaint, the flag was taken down, and at the last veterans meeting, Council meeting, I was told it's being looked into. So if the answer was just to take the flag down, which was a patriotic thing, there was a wrongdoing on that. So if that's your answer, I think it's wrong. Sure. I, um, I don't know if we so much can go back and forth, but I, I will tell you that it was taken down. We are looking at options to be able to uh, illuminate it. Um, it's not just simply being taken down and folded up and put away. Um, that flagpole is town property and we intend to fly an American flag on it and by all means have the proper protocol to do it so thank you yep and yeah it was actually your comments last uh, last late last year or earlier this year December that meeting. yep that we took into consideration thank you mr. Gary Rick Gary, 35 Harding Street. Uh, I came just to support Mike, but after sitting through all this, kind of like my penance, I guess, every once in a while I have to come here, uh, I'll just say a few words. First of all, I want to say uh, thank you to the previous council and the previous mayor, you know, for your service to the town and everything you do. I know it's a thankless job, so Amy, thank you for being the mayor and any, everyone else who serves. And to the new council, uh, good luck. It's, it's not an easy job. You're going to make someone mad all the time. It's just the way it is, trying to make the town move forward. So I just want to say thank you for, uh, you know, volunteering and doing this, and uh, good luck. That's all. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rick. Anybody else wanting to speak? If not, can I get a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Oh. Executive session? I don't believe so. No. no. Should just keep going. Yeah. It's it's I'll move to adjourn. <laughs> this, I have the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Parker wants to go into executive session. That's too much. What do you want to talk about? Let's veto that. Uh, <laughs> no. There's nothing on there. So, um, Councilwoman Bell made a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Can I get a second? second? Uh, motion made and seconded. All those in favor, second. Second. Five by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming tonight. I thank you.